Hey there. Uh, some people were asking, you know, for I should make a tutorial for how to get this going on uh, getting their system turned into a Hackintosh, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> there are so many your individual motherboard, the individual way that your BIOS is set up, the the hardware you have connected. There, there are so many factors that come into this. I can't make a tutorial for this. I can't. There's a, there's no way I could cover every aspect of this. There there are so many things that go into this. I mean, just so many. I could not feasibly make a tutorial for it. There's just it's there's no way. It, it, that would be that would be like trying to make a tutorial on how to install Linux uh, back in two thousand and one. You know, it, it's just no. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of what this is like doing. It's it's like it's like installing Linux before there was a hell of a lot more documentation than there is, and before a lot of this stuff was was automated so much, you know. Um, like like yeah, let's let's say installing Debian in two thousand three. That that's what that's about what this is like doing. Um, it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it was a pain, and there are these th things, kext, K-E-X-T, which are all these, these commands that you have to, and I probably don't have my terminology right here, but it, all these commands that you have, these, these things that will force the system to look at your hardware the right way. Um all these exceptions uh one of the big problems that i had was uh until i figured out what i was doing i had to always boot with a minus f so it would ignore all of the the uh kernel flags just just to boot or i could boot in safe mode but it, w it would just lock up uh, during a regular boot. Uh, and eventually I used a... Uh, uh, what is it called here? I think it's a kext wizard. I'll just say it's a kext wizard. And had it re-examine all of the, the kext entries so it wouldn't... The ones that were invalid it would remove. And then eventually I could boot up without having to do a minus F... Um, one of the very first things I had to do was figure out what um, what type of uh, onboard LAN that I had, uh, the Realtek, and it's a certain kind of Realtek, and I went around and found, on my other computer, found the uh, a download for the drivers for it that will work. Um, and someone had actually put together that sort of thing, um, and it worked out. I was able to, to, you know, that was one of the very first things I had to do, though. Um, and it's been pretty solid. It has. It's been pretty solid. Uh, I was really surprised that even my, uh, uh, my webcam, my, my, uh, LifeCam Studio worked. And it looked halfway decent, too. Uh, problem was, there were no adjustments for it. There was no way to adjust anything for it, but there was an app out there that I had to buy that did the adjustments on it. What was it? What's it called? It's uh, 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 just called Webcam Settings. <laughs> and uh, let me adjust all that stuff. Um, and it gives you profiles that you can save for it, which was really cool. Um, so I could have a daytime profile, nighttime profile, uh, uh, you know, you can save different profiles for it. I thought that was neat. Um, one of the problems was it only was showing, uh, it's only recognizing it as a 720p camera. It doesn't recognize it as a 1080p camera. So, it's like, eh. Um... 
and uh, I got a, a good uh, some good uh, video editing software put on here. Uh, and uh, it, it's been solid. It has. I haven't had any problems with actual crashing or anything like that after I got some of these bugs worked out all these glitches worked out. It's been very solid. But then I decided to update it from 10.10.0 to 10.10.5. And it's still solid, but 10.10.5 uh, .10 uh, turned my life cam studio in from a 720p camera to a probably a 360p camera that has a clearer image when I put it into the lowest resolution possible than when I have it supposedly set for 720p. Set it for 720p, it's this blurry, low-res looking piece of crap. And uh, I imagine this would be the same, this, well not imagine, this would be the same as if I had an actual Mac. Uh, and I'm like, really Apple? Really? So it ends up some of their uh, some of their updates are are shitty too, you know. Anyone who has a live cam studio, uh, if you have the the, the latest uh, non beta non alpha version of uh, of Mac OS, it will uh, render your live cam studio as a, a looking like a ten dollar uh, webcam. So um, I will eventually be. Uh, uh, reinstalling the OS and not updating to 10.10.5. Um, I've not had any issues. The, the reason why I wanted to update... Okay, now here's here's one of the, the, the problems. Uh, I was going to try to play Second Life, and the frame rate just wasn't very good. It just kind of sucked. It, 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 it wasn't awful. Um, it wasn't awful. But there was screen tearing, and if you don't know what tearing is, uh, T E A R I N G, like some, like you know, tearing a piece of paper, you know. Uh, if you don't know what that is, just look up that phrase. I, I don't really want to go into a long explanation about it. I, I guess a simple way I could say it is, it will render the top half of the image before the bottom half of the image. So something that looks like it's it's supposed to be going left and right. A vertical line going left and right will be torn into pieces. Um, so the top half will, will come, will render first before the bottom half. So, you, so it's something that's supposed to be like this will look like it's... Well, anyway, that's hard. I don't want to go into too much more detail about it. Um, so it wasn't a good frame rate. It had that, and it wasn't... The anti-aliasing wasn't working. And I was like, really? So I thought, well, I want to install a later driver for NVIDIA, but I couldn't find the correct version of the NVIDIA driver for 10.10.0. Everything was 10.10.3 was and above. So I said, okay, let's, uh, let's just do the update. Go to 10.10.5. And I did, and then I had to... Oh god, what is that called? What, there's this thing that, uh, okay, I had to do sudo trim force enable, which will do this trimming thing on, on uh, solid state drives, so it, it doesn't build up, uh, like, when you delete files, um, it, it doesn't, it won't ever get the information that is supposed to be deleted information ever mixed up with uh, what you actually want to see. So it, it trims that stuff off. You, you get rid of a file, you delete a file, it trims it off so there's, there's nothing left. Um, and uh, I think Windows 7 was the first OS that, that sort of did that uh, by default. But anyway, um, so I had to, after I did the update, I had to go sudo trimforce enable, and uh, then I put the new uh, NVIDIA drivers on there, the web drivers. Let's see, which one am I using right now? I'm using, oh, it's not telling me what the, well, let me see, maybe, maybe it will tell me. 
Ah uh, yes, WebDriver 346.02.03F01. It says that's the latest one. It says it's up to date. So, but it didn't help the problem on Second Life. Same issues in Second Life. And so, uh, but it's been solid. This thing has been very solid. Um, there is one thing that I was just so irritated with, though. Irritating was the mouse movement and the damn scroll wheel. Whose bright idea was it to put acceleration on the scroll wheel? So you're using the little mouse scroller, and you, if you scroll it really slow, you, you barely have just, just pixel by pixel movement. And you go just a little bit faster, it's like, um, whose bright idea was it to do that? Certainly wasn't Steve Jobs. Um, and it ends up it wasn't. That wasn't Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs would have never have allowed for that shit, you know? Sorry, I, I know I, I talk positively about Steve Jobs a lot, but the guy, he was an ass. He was obsessive. But those two qualities are why Apple used to make really good products. You know, he, he, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have allowed for that shit. And they don't let you change that by default. So I had to get this uh, program called Steer Mouse. And, uh, let me see here. Um, I had to make it so... Okay, tracking speed is set for zero, and sensitivity is set for, what is that about, uh, about 80. It goes from 20 to 1800, so it's almost all the way to the right, and tracking speed almost all the way to the left, and it, it is all the way to the left, and so there's no more acceleration on the mouse. I hate mouse acceleration. I think it's garbage. You know, I, I think w however I move the mouse, it should always be the same amount of movement, whether I'm moving it slow or fast. I, I think acceleration is just garbage. It's another thing I don't like about Linux. You can't turn that off on Linux. You cannot turn it off, period. You cannot turn that off. On Windows, you just uncheck this, this thing that says Incre en enhance mouse precision. There's nothing enhancing about that. If you, if you had a ball mouse, yeah, that would be making it a little easier to use. Who uses a damn ball mouse? But for the, the scroll wheel? Idiotic to put to put acceleration on a scroll wheel. That's just stupid. And so I got steer mouse. Uh, if I end up using it for more than, what, 15 days or something like that, I'll have to pay for it, and I may, um, if I continue to use this OS. I'm not sure whether I'll continue to use this OS. One of the reasons why I, I... I don't have 7 anymore. I lost my 7. It got absorbed by the three bears last year. So all I had left was, uh, was this. I had Windows 8 Pro. I have XP. Oh, yeah, that's a... That's downgrade to that. <laughs> Screen tearing everywhere. You can't you can't make it look good. You can't even watch YouTube videos without nasty screen tearing. And uh, uh, games, the uh, the performance in games. There's some elements that suck unless you're playing older games and then they look all right. Um, Second Life. There's no way to have it not have tearing because you can't turn screen tearing off on the desktop. No thanks. No. <laughs> I, I, I hate downgraded experiences like that as far as computers. So, you know, I could have went to XP or I'm, I'm stuck with Windows 8. Unless I knew someone that, that could get a hold of a decent 7 that I know isn't some sort of a, a, a... that isn't filled with viruses or doesn't have some messed up thing about it. And... I have a friend that's going to help me out with that. He's going to put it onto a thumb drive. And uh, if this uh, Mac OS, if OS X ends up not working out for me, I'll be switching to that. I'll, I'll switch to Windows 7 that has a whole bunch of the crap, <laughs> just generally crap that comes with Windows 
removed. It's it's a it's a really bare bones Windows Seven, um, and uh, I'll switch to that if if this Mac OS doesn't work out. So I'm hoping this Mac OS will work out. Uh, there are some other little idiosyncrasies that I'm not that much of a fan of, like uh, how. Um, if you're in a text entry area, you can't hit home or end to go to the beginning or the end of the text entry area. Those keys don't work for that anymore. Those keys are only for moving the page. That's it. It doesn't affect text entry areas, text fields. So you have to hold the... Uh, if you're using a Windows keyboard, you know, you, you have to hold the Windows key and, and then hit the left or the right arrow. And it's just like, well, that's two sets of keys. Normally, I'm just typing or something, and I just, with one of my fingers, I hit hit end or home, and it takes care of that. Well, you can't do that. You have to hit a key combo. So it's like, okay, well, I might as well just use the mouse to, to move it over or something like that. If, if, if I don't know. I just think that's kind of dumb. Um, another thing is... There's no way to just get to the desktop. Yes, I can hit F11, but then that's not... It moves all the, the, the windows to some other spot. Um, and then as soon as you click something else, they'll all come back again. And it's just like, how do I just get to the desktop? Just give me the desktop. And there, there's, I can't seem to find a way to just do that. Um... Another thing is that's irritating with OS X, and I, I never realized it was this this way, and there might be some other way out of this. I know there's some mode where it will display, and it's not the same as like hitting Alt-Tab on Windows. It will put all of the, the things that you're looking at on the screen in this, in this, uh, tries to make it very organized looking in anything that you're using. And then you just click on one of those, right? And I don't know, I haven't found that mode. I know I need to find it. And maybe that will do this. But one of the things that, that is irritating is how, like if you use, in this case, it would be Windows tab, but it's really the, that little clover leaf looking thing, key, the command key uh, that you hit and tab. Or if... Uh, Let's say, let's say you have three windows open in Chrome, right? You're in a Hangout, and you have, that's in one window, you have some other search you're looking for in another window, and then you have the, the main one that has a bunch of tabs open, right? Uh, so you got three, three windows open. Well, if you go to the dock, um, you can't just move to the bottom, move to Chrome, and have it bring up the three windows. No, you have to... You have to go to, go there, right-click the uh, uh, Chrome, and then go move up to an option, and then move over again, and now you can see your which windows it, that you want to go to, and you'll, they'll be named, and then you have to click on one of those. Um, if you use the the Windows tab or the the forgot the key name of the key, the little clover leaf looking thing, and tab. All it will show is the, the it, 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 you can switch to that program. You can't choose which window of those programs that you go to. No, you just choose that program. And I'm like, why would they do that? But, you know, there's little things like that. Um uh, a lot of the newer programs, you can't just, like, you can't double-click the top of the window and have it open it up to his, to maximize, to fill the screen. Um, all you can do is, um, you can click the, it has a red, a red button, which is to close, it has a uh, orangish yellow button, which is to minimize it, and you've got this green one that, if you hit it, it turns it into a completely full screen app that turn that makes all the menus go away. That will, will come back if you move your mouse over to it, right? But in order to make it just fill the screen, you have to hold two keys and then hit that, and then it will maximize it. 
You know, there's no just quick way to maximize it. You know, it, it's it's very much focused on trying to. They expect you to either use something completely full screen, or everything is in these these. What do you call that? Uh, compartmentalize isn't the word. Um, Ends with I-L-E, the whatever the word is. Anyway, um, they expect you to work with everything in these little windows all over the screen. And that's that's not the way I'm used to working with things. It's not bad, but it's definitely not the way I'm used to working with things. So there, there are some things to get used to with this. Um, this is the longest I've ever had a chance to work with OS X. Uh... I generally like what I'm what I'm seeing. Uh, so we'll we'll see if this will be something I continue to use. Again, you know, for those that try to push forth for for oh, just go to Linux. Hey, I am not downgrading my computer experience to programs that act like they're at least twelve years old. Um. Almost every program in Linux, almost every program, acts like it was made somewhere between 1997 and 2003. Sorry, that that's how they act. That's how their interfaces are. That's how they function. There, there's just hardly anything on Linux that acts like a currently made program. Uh, and the, the, the argument is, well, it's free, don't complain. Well, that's fine. If, 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 if free means that everything acts like I, I just stepped out of 2003, you know, I'll, I'll figure some other way to do things, you know? Um, I mean, the, the very idea that's that people will sit there and compare GIMP to Photoshop, you know, maybe... You can, yes, you can get by on programs that act like they're 15 years old. Yes, you can do it. You can get by with really antiquated programs. Okay? Um, if someone had to, okay, they could get by on a Commodore 64. <laughs> you know? You can get by. You can do things. Um, someone can get by using Microsoft Paint. Okay? If you do enough steps, you can get by. I'd rather not do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so, for those that sit there and argue, Oh, go Linux! Go Linux! Yes, Linux is a solid operating system. Linux is a very good operating system. Software availability for it is garbage. You know. I'll take that back. There are some programs that that act current. And do you know what those programs are for doing? They're for consuming other people's content. If all you do with your computer is consume other people's content, Linux is the OS for you. If the only thing that you create is programming, you're a good programmer, Linux is the OS for you. But if you're a creative person and you want something that even is within seven or eight years of industry standards, don't go Linux. Just don't do it. It's, it's a waste of your time. So... And, you know, again, you can say, well, well, I can do everything in, in GIMP and, and in this program and in this program, then, then their competition. Yes, you can do it if you want to put that much work into it. It's really not that hard. No, it's not really that hard. Yeah, just like um, it's not that hard to edit text files and type in a bunch of commands to do something that in Windows or on the Mac just takes a single click of the mouse. You're right. It's not really that hard.
But do I want to put that, that much more work into everything that I do? No. <laughs> so, you know, if, if something's going to be a little bit of a pain to work with, I'll, I'll be happy to work with having a Hackintosh. If, if it's, if it's, if, you know, if I can get my webcam looking decent again and go back to 10.10.0, you know, if I can do that again and if I can just find some way to have some sort of NVIDIA control panel of some sort for Mac OS, so it's not just defaulting to this thing that I can't adjust, you know, if I can find those two things, those, 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 are, those are my main two focuses now, you know, if I can take care of those things, then this Hackintosh machine will be what I want to do. But if I can't, then I will go to Windows 7, um, and it will be some hacked version of it, and that's fine. Because uh, Windows 8, uh, no thanks. No thanks. Um, I, I hated Windows 8. Hated it. Hated it. I hated the element of two completely separate operating systems haphazardly put on top of each other. Hated it. Hated it! You know. So... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I thought 10, if 10 didn't have the problems that it does, you know, I would still prefer 10 much more over 8, but these issues with 10, <laughs> no thanks, so this is a very long rant, and I apologize for that, I'm going to be uploading it as low quality because I don't feel like if I upload with this phone, this video, it's probably going to take two hours. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm going to upload it low quality. But there's nothing particularly good looking about this video anyway. So, rear.